Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Using Exponents, Part 1. We want to familiarize ourselves and get practice with writing exponents down and translating a, an expression that involves an exponent into multiplication because that's going to be very helpful to us when we simplify expressions later on, especially when we have variables. So let's start by just talking about the idea of an exponent. So what we have here is the number five and it's raised to the power of two. Now the exponent itself is this number two up here and the what we call the base is the number five. Now what does this actually mean? This means it's a shorthand way of writing a multiplication. We want to to express this as what we call a product of factors. So don't let the, the idea of product of factors scare you. Product means multiplication, factors means thing, I guess is probably the, the easiest way to think of it. So when I ask you to write it as a product of factors, I'm asking you to write this as the multiplication of things. It's a little silly, but that's how we translate math language into everyday language. So this exponent means that you take the base, which is the number five, and you multiply it times itself. And the number of fives that you have is equal to the, the, the exponent number that you have. So five to the power of two, if I write it as the product of factors, the answer here is five times five. One of the factors of this thing is five, and the other factor is another five. These, product, these factors, when you multiply them together, meaning when you take the product of those, they equal the five squared that we have. Squared is the power of two, of course. All right. Now I didn't ask for it in this particular problem, but you already know that five times five is 25. So these three things, they look different, but they all mean the same thing. Five to the power of two means five times five. There's two of them here because the power is two. And five times five is equal to 25, so 25 is also equal to five to the power of two. These are all three different ways of writing the same thing. Now just to get a little, you know, a little more practice and clarity, what if I had five to the power of four. How would I write this as the product of factors? All right. Well, I would have the base five, but then I would be multiplying times itself, and then again times itself. Now this is five to the power of three, but we actually have a four. So we have to do it one more time, five to the power of four. There are four of them here, you know, multiplied together because the power is four. Now to figure out what this calculates to, it would be five times five, and this is also five times five, so it's 25 times 25. You can work that out, it's gonna be a gigantic number. The point here isn't to calculate the answer, the point is to write out the exponent as a string of multiplication, because that's actually what we're gonna use here very soon to simplify algebraic expressions. So we would basically just say, if we're trying to write this as a product of factors, this is the final answer, this whole string of multiplications there. Of course, you have five to the power of three, then it's just five times five times five, if you have five to the power of seven, then you'll have seven of these you know, fives there, you know, each multiplied together. All right, now let's switch gears to a different problem. Let's talk about seven multiplied by seven multiplied by seven. And I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna go backwards. Instead of take the exponent and write it as a product of factors, this is a product of factors. I want you to write it as an exponent right, as, as something raised to the power of something. Well, the base is what we're multiplying together, so it's seven to the power of one, two, three. So this is the seven to the power of three, right? Now, again, the focus of this is not to calculate the answer, but we know that seven times seven is 49, and this 49 times seven, it actually works out to 343. So these are all three equivalent. Seven to the power of three is equal to seven times seven times seven, which is also equal to 343 when you calculate it. So this term seven cubed is also equal to 343. But the point here isn't so much to calculate, it's to write it as a product of factor, write it as a term that involves an exponent. All right, let's take three to the power of five, and we're gonna write this as a product of factors. All you gotta do is blow out the multiplication, the base is three, we're gonna have five of them. So there's number one, there's number two, there's number three, there's number four, and there's number five. One, two, three, four, five. This is a product of factors. If you wanna know what this is equal to, then you'd have to go, you know, three times three is nine, and then this nine times three is 27, and you have 27 times three, and then whenever you get that, that will be times three again. So it's gonna be a very large number. We don't care about that so much now. This is a product of factors that's equal to three to the power of five. All right, let's move right along. What if I give you the factors 11 times 11 times 11 times 11? 
This is a product of factors. Uh, a factor, again, is just something you're multiplying together. So this is four items multiplied together. Write it as a term that involves an exponent. Well, we're multiplying 11, so the base is going to be 11, and there's one, two, three, four of them, so it's 11 to the power of four. So we're just going backwards. Product of factors, this is a term that involves an exponent. All right, let's do that same thing again. What if we have larger numbers, right? What about 26 times 26 times 26? I have no idea what this is equal to. You could get a calculator or do it by hand. It's going to be a very large number. How do you write this product of factors as a term with an exponent? Well, I'm multiplying 26s together, and there are one, two, three of them, so it's 26 to the power of 3. Right? This is not 2 times 6 to the power of 3. This is 26 to the power of 3. If you want, you could put this in parentheses. You don't have to, to indicate that the, the number 26 is raised to the power of 3. All right. What about the term with an exponent 9 to the power of 6? How do you write this out in terms of a product of factors? Well, the base is 9. We are multiplying 6 of them here. 9, and there's number 2, and there's number 3 and there's number four, and there's number five, and there's number six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So nine to the power of six, this is what it's equal to in terms of a product of factors. As to what number it's equal to, well, I haven't calculated it, but it's, you know, nine times nine is 81, then you have 81 times nine, and whatever you get there, again times nine, and again times nine, again, it's gonna be a very, very large number. All right. Let's write as a product of factors five, to the power of five, actually. Yes, we haven't done that one quite yet. Five to the power of five. So what do we have here? We have a base of five, and we're doing it five times. So number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. One, two, three, four, five of them multiplied together, five to the power of five, and that is the final answer. All right, only three more problems. What about something larger? What if I give you uh, 130 multiplied by 130, and I ask you to write this in, in a shorter form in terms of an exponent. You would write 130 to the power of 2, because this is the base, 130, and then you're squaring it. It's power of 2. You could wrap parentheses around if you want. You don't really have to. Up to you. Now, for the last two problems, let's go ahead and write it out, and then let's also calculate it. What about 2 to the power of 3? Let's write this out as a product of factors, and then also calculate it. So, this is 2 to the power of 3, so it's 2, the base, times itself, and times itself again, because there's three of them. So this is how I would write it out. But then I also know that 2 times 2 is 4, and then this 4 times another 2 is 8. So I guess I would circle this whole answer if I'm trying to write it two ways. I'm trying to write it out as a product of factors and calculate it. 2 cubed is equal to 8 because 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. And then this is our very last problem, 6 squared. Let's again write it out and calculate it. Well, the base is 6, and it's multiplied by itself. There's two of them here, so that's 6 squared. And 6 times 6, we know, is 36. So if I was trying to write it out and also calculate the answer, I would say 6 times 6, and that's 36, and that's writing that guy out. So in this lesson, we've covered exponents. What an exponent is, it's essentially a shorthand way of writing large multiplications. When you have a string of numbers multiplied together, and it's the same number multiplied by itself over and over, we write it as an exponent. I know it may not seem so here in the beginning, but actually, we use exponents all the time. You might say, well, when would I ever need to multiply numbers times itself all the time? Well, it turns out it happens all the time. And I don't want to get into the reasons why right now, but you will find that you will never get away from exponents. You're going to be around forever. So we, let's see, we have to get comfortable using them. So practice these. Follow me on to part two. We're going to continue uh, getting practice using exponents.